Okay, we're back into it. 50 and 50. Um, second start to this. My energy levels are very low in the first one, so I'm trying to up it a bit. IBR the facts is, is the next one I'm going to cover. Um, and again, huge thanks to Netix, Progene, and Romenko for looking uh, and supporting all these 50 and 50 videos. Uh, as we go along. So there's lots of information every day for the next 50 days. And I think the, the, they'll be there on the website as a resource to go back to whenever people want. Okay, so what is IBR? It's an infectious bovine rhinotracheitis. It's a virus, a respiratory virus, and we're all learning about respiratory viruses. And um, it's, it's, it's slightly different because it belongs to a family of viruses called herpes and viruses. And people would be familiar, or humans would be familiar with the cold sore virus, which basically um, this, this effective latency with herpes virus is important. So you can uh, get infected, um, you may or may not show clinical signs, and then the virus will reappear and reshed, and you can get symptoms again. Same in cattle, when they become infected, they can have clinical signs of respiratory disease, we'll talk about that. Um, or they can be healthy uh, and fight an immune response, but the, the virus goes into the nervous system where it's latent and that, those, those latent animals become carriers almost for the disease. And where they're particularly at risk is for bringing in animals into our farm, if they become stressed again, you get shedding of the virus and that's how it's the source of inspection or, or spread can occur. So latency is very important with IBR. What are the symptoms? Well, the typical symptoms, because the virus gets in and attacks the nasal passages and the upper airways of cattle, and you get inflammation, there and you'll often see a reddening around the nose or the trachea and post-mortem be very red and um, cause irritation you get obviously high temperatures typically with IBR you see temperatures always up around the 40 degrees not always but that was my experience again the irritated trachea can cause coughing you could have snotty noses conjunctivitis in the eyes and um, so severe inflammation the other thing is it can, it can get into the bloodstream can cause fertility issues and it also causes immune suppression. So there's lots of effects with IBR, um, and if it comes at the wrong time when animals are stressed, it can be significant. So how is it spread from animals? Obviously, if animals are infected, they spread an aerosol through the air from one to the other by close contact, so typically few animals, and how does that risk increases? So if we look at how does it spread, this is very crude down here, these animals are naive, they haven't been infected. If I buy in a latent carrier animal with low levels here, an animal gets stressed, it can shed infecting a, a naive animal, that now that naive animal may show symptoms or get sick, but that starts shedding huge amounts of virus. So latent carriers, when they reactivate um, through stress, can spread the, shed the virus, uh, not in huge quantities, but when animals get sick for the first time, that's when they really do. So that's what happens in a herd. A latent carrier comes in, infects a small number of animals, but those infected animals then can spread it through the herd. Okay, does it cost a lot of money? Is it a significant disease? Well, at a very top level, if you look at a lot of Nordic countries have now eradicated IBR. Um, if you look in Europe, a lot of countries have eradicated IBR. So nationally, we need to be thinking about our eradication programs, probably the next program coming down the tracks in Ireland, because it is a hugely significant economic disease. We've got to get on top of it. Um, I suppose, uh, for me, on individual farms, I've seen where you've outbreaks, massive impacts on fertility, health, and you know, when it's very severe, it can cause death. A lot of these respiratory pathogens can open the door for bacteria and pneumonias as well. Okay, can we test for it? Yes, the good news is we can test for it, and the, and the tests are quite accurate. We can do bloods on cattle, we can do milk samples of dairy cows, and I find that bulk milk tank sampling, uh, where we check for IBR antibody levels, are very, very useful. So when we have a virus coming into the body, the body will pr produce antibody cell virus to recognize and help the immune system fight against it. And what we're doing basically when we're testing for a lot of these viruses is we're looking for the levels of those antibodies which suggest exposure to the virus. Um, in animals that are sick, we can use nasal swabbing, yeah, PCR testing and nasal swab, swab the nose, very useful for a lot of respiratory diseases. And on post-mortems, I keep saying this, if animals die on farm, there's value in those dead animals to find out what happened for the rest of the herd. We can look at the trachea and windpipe of these animals grossly on post-mortem. You'll often see it's incredibly red and inflamed, and we can, do, we can do testing on that as well. So we can test for IBR. Just quickly on control programs. Um, I suppose if your farm has no IBR issues and you, you, know, you want to do some testing to see where you are for IBR levels and what I've done in the past in, in beef farms is I've taken a portion of animals at a TB test every year and run what I call a screen to look for antibodies. Now it's not the whole the herd but a, a number, a significant number to monitor over time and I think that's useful because you're building up an IBR profile. Then you have the options of how do you keep the disease out. Remember anytime we buy animals into a farm 
we, that's the most risk of disease introduction. Because animals look healthy, we can't see it. So we can blood test these animals, uh, we can look for the source, for where they've came from. But you know, a lot of farms aren't doing that. So you know, a lot of control programs, and I'm a big fan of um, vaccination, IVR vaccination. It protects the herd. It also reduces shedding from these latent carrier animals, which is very useful. Uh, there's lots of options around IVR vaccines, lots of labels or lots of um, different companies making them. Live versus dead, again, it depends on the farm yourself. I, I was always a fan of live vaccine, but again, have the conversation with your own vet around what's the best program. Key thing for me with vaccine programs, if you look at the yearly cycle, December up here, down to June, if, it's a, if you're calving in the springtime, be it beef or dairy, that you put your vaccine into the animals before the risk period so that the most immunity around the risk periods or stress periods. Um, and really important, these vaccines, whether it's given into the muscle if it's live or under the skin, and the timing is correct, store them right. Really see a lot of issues with vaccines being used incorrectly. They're expensive, we need to get the best results for them. So look, um, IBR vaccination works for me. Again, it's a, still a combination. You don't ever take your eye off biosecurity and risk of bring, bringing disease in. But vaccination programs work well. We're probably looking towards a national eradication program. Because it is a significant disease, it does cause issues. And a lot of our herds in Ireland and, and worldwide, we have a lot of IBR in them anyway. So it's, you know, we need to make sure that we get on top of this disease uh, and get control over it. Okay, IBR, that's it. Uh, thought for the day today, uh, it's been a very busy, chaotic uh, 10 days for me, two weeks, trying to readjust and uh, particularly from a work point of view, doing a lot of stuff digitally now. Um, and you know, I sort of felt myself go all over the place and uh, it just reminded me, my thought for today is, the power of focus. Usually I'm quite good and focused on what I have to do. Um, and, and when you lose that focus, things can get a little bit chaotic. So today is the power of focus. Focus on one job at a time. Focus particularly when you're working on what's the key jobs you need to do. And of course, don't forget to lose focus on what's really important in life, which is obviously family and health.